This new generation of personal watercraft is something entirely different. It does more than skim the surface. This watercraft dives underwater and can remain submerged at a depth of three feet or more for up to a minute. It also leaps into the air and rolls with the waves. This watercraft is painted to look like a vintage fighter jet, and it rolls and dives like one in the water. A worker sprays a gel coat into a mold for the main body. This gel will become the shiny surface of the completed fiberglass part. Once the gel coat is hardened, a worker brushes a vinyl ester resin onto it. This resin is known for its water resistance. He switches from a brush to a roller as he generously applies the resin to the hardened gel coat. The crew then drapes what's called chop strand mat over the mold. This fabric is made of long strands of fiberglass. The binder in it dissolves on contact with the resin, causing the fabric to soften to the contours of the mold. After trimming the excess material, the crew completely saturates the strand mat with more resin. Rolling it on firmly gets rid of air bubbles. The top half of the main body mold has been lined the same way. They now bolt a dorsal fin mold to the back on the top half of the mold. The crew now joins the two halves of the mold. As a crane lowers the top to the bottom, workers ensure they line up perfectly and they lock these two main molds together with bolts. A worker enters through the cockpit opening to roll on more resin. Meanwhile, another member of the crew pulls two sheets of fiberglass fabric onto a cutting machine. The top fabric is a strong, tightly woven fiberglass, and the bottom one is the chopped strand mat. Automated blades cut the fiberglass to various shapes and dimensions, each one designed for a different part of the diving vessel mold. These large rectangles will be used to mold the sides of the watercraft. After folding up the pieces, the worker hands them over to the fiberglass technician. The technician has just an hour to apply the fiberglass before the recently applied resin starts to harden. He builds up eight layers and completely saturates each one with more resin. While the thicker fiberglass material provides strength, the thinner chopped strand mat aids adhesion and helps the fabrics conform to the mold. After a three-hour cure, workers have a solid seamless fuselage. The crane lifts the fuselage out of the mold and moves it onto a dolly where it will stay while the team works on the other parts of the watercraft. The cone-shaped front bumper is next. The worker uses only three layers of fiberglass to make it because this bumper is meant to collapse in the event of a collision. For that reason, the part is also known as the vessel's sacrificial nose. At another station, Crew members line fin-shaped molds with fiberglass and then pour liquefied plastic into the cavity. Once cured, the plastic will anchor the top of a steel wing shaft in the fin. A worker presses the shaft into the liquefied plastic with the end protruding from the fin. A second mold also lined with fiberglass and filled with a plastic core goes on top. The team bolts it together and leaves the part to cure. The fins will ultimately be supported by a triangular scaffold made of aluminum square tubing. The worker clamps the scaffold framework to a work table to stabilize the framework as he welds it together. He then welds the scaffold tower to the base. The worker drills holes for the bushings that will be used to attach the fins to the scaffold. Stay tuned for more as the team prepares this personal diving watercraft for its maiden voyage. This personal watercraft leaps, dives, and barrel rolls with the waves, but it doesn't capsize. 
it's been engineered to return to an upright position in the water. And when it comes to the fun factor, this diving watercraft leaves other recreational boats in its wake. To make the diving watercraft's passenger cabin, a worker sprays a gel coat onto a form and covers it with fiberglass. A computer-driven router then carves into marine-grade plywood to produce structural backing for the sides of the cockpit. A worker slathers adhesive putty onto the plywood part and applies more adhesive to the fiberglass cockpit. He presses the plywood to the glued areas of the cockpit and brushes resin onto the front of the plywood. After cutting the cockpit section in two, the crew glues the parts to the inside of the fuselage. The fabricating team applies adhesive putty to the cone-shaped bumper known as the sacrificial nose. They slide it onto the front of the fuselage and then screw the bumper in place temporarily while the adhesive sets. Another worker sands all the fiberglass parts of the watercraft to remove bumps and blemishes. This piece is the engine hatch. The team bolts the aluminum scaffold to the floor of the fuselage. This is a test fit to confirm that the dimensions are exactly right. As they install the scaffold, they use dummy wing shafts to correctly position it within the vessel. They confirm that the dimensions are right and that the scaffold sits plumb to the base of the watercraft. The next team inserts the hatch frame in the rim around the cockpit. They'll bind the frame in place later with a liquid plastic and adhesive putty. After priming the sanded surface of the watercraft, team members lower the 300 horsepower engine into the hatch. This is a dry fit to confirm everything lines up correctly. They'll eventually remove the engine for the final paint and artwork. As the dry fit continues, they connect the air tubes to the snorkel fins that deliver air to the engine. The engine hatch has by now also been primed, and they fit it to the diving watercraft's main body. The crew verifies that the hatch sits flush with the rest of the fuselage. A worker installs the exhaust outlet into the hole at the rear of the watercraft. Crew members slide elevator fins into bushings at the back. These fins will control the pitch axis of the watercraft. Next, they install the jet propulsion system. Back to the cockpit, the crew bolts the control pedals to the floor and run cables to the jet propulsion unit, the elevator fins, and the steering system. They reinstall the dive fin scaffold, which has been powder coated in a yellow color. The crew connects the dive fins to the scaffold. They situate the control panel just above the control pedals. They run a metal linkage from the dive fins to a control stick. They then test the control stick and confirm it moves the dive planes easily and correctly. Bucket seats made of lightweight carbon fiber minimize the load for added speed. They tuck a rubber gasket into the framework for the clear canopy that will surround the occupants. They add a bead of sealant where the gasket mates to the window frame. The vessel canopy is made of thick, aircraft-grade acrylic. It's been tinted to repel the sun's rays and keep the temperature cooler in the cockpit.